sufficient is my life. It's in my DNA. From above the water and below the surface. All right. You know what? Let's start again. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I start with, aren't <laughs> G'day and welcome to Alma Glashan's Fishing Adventures. Now, what we've done is, because we've all got this COVID stuff, we're all stuck at home, this is his school break at the moment for Coops, is that what we're going to do is just compile all the old footage and the one thing everyone's been asking for? Swordfish. swordfish. Everyone wants to know about swordfish. So what we've done is we've compiled all our footage and put it together from the early days when we used to fish at night to when Coops started fishing with us, the whole way through to show you, well, hopefully, you know, it's a bit of entertainment, a few things in there, but to show you a few tricks as well along the way. So I suppose for me, when it all started, is way back before it was trendy. We used to go out at night at Bermagui. We used to put a generator up on the front of the boat and we'd fish for ages. My mate Andrew passed and all that. It was just crap. Yeah, and you know what we caught? Like Nothing. Port beagles and makos. Yeah. But we ended up catching a swordfish and the best part is that we caught it. So we had live squid down, we had dead squid down, we had live slimy down. And my mate Andrew Pass, who was a gun fisherman, goes, oh, I'm going to catch a mako. So he puts a slimy fillet down and he's sitting there holding the line, goes, yep, got one. Pulls it up. Sorry. Swordfish. And that was the first ever swordfish tagged for the Billfish Foundation in Australia. It wasn't the biggest fish, but you know what? It's still, still a swordfish. But from there, we kept pushing and pushing and trying it. And the other bloke who was doing it, which comes right into this, was Richie Bella. So he was fishing at night as well. The first big one we actually caught was when I was filming Strike Zone. Oh, yeah. And it was one of those amazing things where you, we went out, we went out in Mick Lyons' boat, and we raced all the way down south. We were fishing for tuna on the edge. We we're going to fish the night and do it for swords. Put the gear down, waited. Tap tap, got a bite, went, oh yeah, we're gone. This is it. Thinking, oh, it's a shark, you know? Yeah. End up winding it up. And it's a bloody sword. swordfish. I think it's a swordfish. Swordfish, get the gas. Get the gas, go forward. Get another gaff. Get another gaff down. Get another gaff. Get a gaff. Pull it towards you a bit. Stick it over him. Stick it, got him. Oh, yeah! Next one, fixed head. You cannot believe what we've just done. Yeah! It never fought the whole fight. Oh, and we've got this. Ah, he fought it. He fought a little bit. We wound it up, we thought it was a shark, took the leader, and a bill appeared. And it's a bloody swordfish. And you can see from the footage how elated we are. It's like, oh, we got him on. Look at that! And that was the first real one ever caught off Sydney. But you know what? I hate it for night fishing at night. It's so just. Terrible. It's wet, it's cold, everyone that can't handle it gets seasick all the time. It just drives you mad. And then you only catch a fish when, you know, when... Well, we call one in. And, and that's the interesting thing. If you fish at night, it was one in. I'd probably, I reckon I've done over 100 days at night fishing swords, at least over And then 100. you've done what? Not even 50, And we've caught two 50. and missed a couple. We've had the odd one. like 50 day, day time and you've caught like four We get them most, most times. Have a look at that. Oh. Well, <laughs> didn't take as long to get the first one. Well, that brings us to the next one, catching our first daylight swordy. Now, daylight sword fishing started down in Venezuela. Then the guys like Nick Stance and all that, everyone started with his dad and all that, started fishing in Florida. And because everyone was night fishing in those days and they couldn't work out why. You know, daytime was more a fluke. And then they started kicking off in Florida. They'd taken long lining out of the Florida Straits. I'm not quite sure what the deal is, but either way, well, they started targeting it. The next thing you know, they start catching more and more. The problem is you're fishing it. We know from all the satellite tagging, swordfish sit between four and 600 meters yeah. during the day. 
So you're fishing pretty deep. So they started catching them. And at the same time, I started fishing really heavily using help from the long liners and from everyone yeah. to try and, but they were all fishing out wider here. So I was fishing out in, you know, God, it would be thousand, thousand fathoms, you know, most of the time out in deeper water. We caught big eyes, we caught threshers, but I've never caught a shark. But Richie Abella was the only one I know that caught one out there during the day. So he caught one down at JB, I think. But then the guys from Tassie started going, oh, we're going to fish down here. Now, Tassie wasn't a spot you'd fish for swords. The next thing you know, Leo and the guys start catching swords, but they're back in that 600. So the next thing you do, what do we do? Went straight off Sydney, and what do we do? Cool one. It was on the electric reel. You know you've got to make it a bit more exciting. So we went out, we picked the ground. This has got to be exciting. We picked the ground, we said this is a good spot. We put a squid on it, set it all up, for it says tap, tap. We're like, oh yeah, start winding it up. I'm like, remember that when it starts yeah, going, I go, there's no weight on here. I'm going, oh, the jackets must have eaten it all yeah. Bring it up and we get it to the top. How good was that when you wound it up to the top? And the thing is, we're winding up, we have one of those bloody sea perch little things off the bottom on it. And I'm saying, oh, I'm like, oh, it's really like a sea perch. And then you know, goes, no, look over there. And you look over the side, it's just a streak of purple, almost like 10 meters away from the actual bait. And, you know, both, me and Dad just looked at each other and went, oh, oh God. And Dad's sitting there with the gaff yeah, ready. Dad, yeah. 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 You don't have to, you know. But you're sitting there with the gaff ready. And I'm like, I was so I'm excited. Around, you know. And you've got it up. You went up. I've gone, ah. Oh, and here's this. And how purple was it? Just it was lit awesome. up like a Christmas yeah. tree. That was it though, wasn't it? Was Dead that. flat and sunny. And you sit there thinking, all those years of doing this crap. Or you didn't have to do the night fishing. No. And it just, oh. Fishing is my life. Great part is, so we caught that one, which I think is the first daytime sword ever off Sydney. There's, There's a couple targeted. There's a yeah. couple of guys that used to catch them in Sean out against Napa fishing. Yeah. That doesn't count. If you're not targeting them, you're not yeah. catching them. And from there, that was it. I was hooked. At the same time, Richie Abella was kicking off down in Victoria. So a couple of Victorian guys went down to Tassie and were catching them there. But Richie started going, well, hang on. We can fish more local. And what's even better is that, and it all falls into place, is Malacuda, where Kevin and Amanda are, they opened up their, their boat ramp. So you yeah. used to have to, Malacuda forever around the world is right on the southeast corner of Australia. It's a little lake system. There's a little crappy bar you have to cross, which you really can't get out. Or there's launching, which is basically straight in the surf in a tractor, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's rubbish. So they went down and they finally, the local community, they had a bit of conflict from the greenies as usual, always fighting over everything to stop it, which of course they were using the boat ramp now. They put in a proper ocean boat ramp. It's anywhere but perfect, but you know what? It suddenly gives you access to Bass Canyon, which is the biggest, I think, it's the biggest underwater canyon in the world. But what it did was suddenly gave access. And Richie, when I did the podcast with him, was telling me about how when they were down there marlin fishing and he'd taken the sword gear and thought, oh, you know, we're set the marlin are biting down on there. So he thought, I'll have a crack. And bang, caught one and then caught another one. And so I raced down to see him, laughed to catch our little yeah. one and go, that's it. Raced down, it was me, him, Ian Miller and George Lorenzis. And I think they caught two the day before I arrived. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I think it was. So Ian Miller, who makes those beautiful Miller rods, he was doing the same thing. So he'd done the early days because everyone wants to catch a swordfish. Yeah. He'd done those early days. And he did a lot in New Zealand and just got clobbered over there, you know, crap weather and just horrible. Anyway, so we're running down. I still remember going to sea first thing in the morning because a couple of yeah. boats had been waiting to see where they are. Like, instead of coming up with their own ideas, people were they waiting follow to follow you, them. Yeah. So, of course, you had Richie at the wheel. Pfft, no one caught up. <laughs> Go on. So, but when we're going out, I'm sitting there and we've gone out in the dark and we're heading out. It's like a 35 mile yeah. run to the ground. So we get out and I'm looking at it, putting sunscreen on. And I turn around to, to Ian and I go, this it's is not real. Yeah, let's go from all the dawn and see if we can get what have you now been doing for the last six or eight years? That's what I keep telling Richie. This oh, sort of fish oh, here go. it took me it got me it took me longer to get my first gets up, gets his first sword in the middle of the day, and it is dead flat glamour. 
It's the way to do it. <laughs> it's the only way. It is the only way to do it. And then it gets better. He gets a surface, and a bloody maker comes and taxes it. <sighs> but the good thing is we still got most of the fish. You know, like it's yeah, good. There's not that. He still caught his first sword. And then I hooked up. And he lost it. No, I caught it. Thank you very much. I love the That's confidence crazy. you get from the family here. <laughs> and I'm fighting this fish, and it was, I think it ended up taking me, it would have been three hours or something. The reason was I wanted to go soft on it because I didn't want the yeah. hooks to pull, because with swordfish, it runs very soft. soft yeah. yeah. Anyway, we get it up, it finally comes up, and it's, it's come across the top, and it just leaned to go away like that. And I've loaded up on the rod to try and roll the fish over yeah. so they could get the shot with the gaffs. As I've done it, I felt this weird thing as they hit it with the gas. Anyway, so we've secured the fish. I thought that was weird. And I'm looking at it going, where's the hook? Like, oh, yeah. Hook's fallen out. Hook's fallen out. But, back it. but the hook has gone in his nose, in his nostril, just there in front of his bill, and wedged in. So of course, no wonder he fought so hard. But, and do you know the best part? Malakut is a tiny little place. We came back in. And Amanda, one of our friends, comes up and goes, you need a beer. And I know, I've just caught my biggest swordfish at the time. Like, yes, I need a beer. <laughs> she Bring it on. So yeah, that made it all that perfect experience. But then Ian and I catch our first ones together. And it was good because he had been done the hard yards. Because everyone's yeah. now swordfishing like you. Yeah. And haven't done those crap, horrible, miserable, wet and shit nights. And no one will understand that except for the guys that did it. So talking about pain, let's talk about your biggest sword you've ever encountered. So we were, you know, we're down fishing with Richie for the show and... Um, well, we should explain that. So we're yeah. down from Monster Fish, which is the US, one of the big hit shows, yes, because we were hosting it, yeah. um, on the Outdoor Channel, and they wanted a Monster Fish. So we went down there and put you straight on the rod. And we're going out again with Richie because you want to deal with your mates, you know, for a trip like this. Yeah. And this young fella, how old were you then? Ten. So three years ago. In the morning, we've gotten out to the grounds, we've dropped one rod down. It's on the road, it's on the road. Yeah, I'm there, I just saw it. Straight over the rod, he's, he's checking. I think there's a fish on this, you know. He's wound up, and then all because there was sudden, no weight then, was it? There was no, nothing because the weight being knocked off. Yeah, so the rod is bent properly, and it just snapped up. And we're like, Oop. so we've run over, we've had a look, and you know, I'm sitting there, I'm like, this, this might be my time to shine here. And so we we run over, we're checking it, you know, all that, and um, end up getting weight on it. Because you went quite a bit. Oh, you why? Because they, they just slowly, they, they take their time and sort of fish. Well, it's 600 metres. See, this thing people don't realise. You're 600 metres away. If you look over there how far 600 metres is, it's over half a mile away. Well, not quite half a mile, half a kilometre away. Yeah. It's almost half a mile away. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so we're winding up, you know, and all of a sudden we've got weight. We're like, oh, you know, this is, this is a proper fish, you know, there's some weight on it. We, we So, Richie's get, got me on the rod, you know, I've seen it. He should be clipped up and everything. I can't touch him now. I told him to before we yanked the bars up. We got a fish literally straight away. Coops, you got to keep your attention, brother. Bring it in, put it into your room. We literally just hit the bottom. We literally just hit the bottom. That's it, you know. Five four. Well, you got it up. Remember it came, so with swordfish, what's really interesting, they come straight to the surface and yours did it straight up. And you don't know, you can't call, a lot of people call them swordfish. They hook up to swordfish. It could be thrashers, it could, it could be big eyes, yeah, yeah. it could be shark. Yeah, you think, think of the it. amount of fish down there, though, you, like, you know, you, you, you can never tell. Yeah, 
Back when he started taking my mum. Um, you agree? Like you're tied on him, yeah? So you're so used to it. And I've, I'm looking out the back because the lines come up and you can it's tell. Right up yeah, right and it's like I was like, this is like a marlin because you, you can see what you can tell when the marlin are about to jump. You see the line come up, you know, out of the surface gradually, and you look where it is. I'm like, this, this fish is about to jump, and all of a sudden you see this huge fish just go and launch itself at you. I'll be able to see it, you know. I want to. But everyone doubted you. Yeah, how the bits were. I'm, I'm sure it's a sword. You sure it's sword? You're like, it had a bill. It, it, it was a sword. And I'm, Got to be a sword if it splashed, I reckon. They just dropped. Was it a sword? Did you see it? Yeah. Was it a sword? Had a bill. Come on, straight away. Oh, he's dead. He's in the back. He's in the back. Just a splash. Woo! Got to be a sword if it splashed, I reckon. They just dropped. Was it a sword? Did you see it? Yeah. Was it a sword? Had a bill. <laughs> Are you serious? Yep. I just saw the sword oh. flash. Nice and easy, Coop. Nice and easy. This thing can try. This huge fish just go and launch itself at you. I'll be able to see it, you know. I don't want to. I'm but everyone doubted you. Yeah, how the bits were. I'm, I'm <laughs> sure it's a sword. You're sure it's a sword. You're like, it had a bill. It, it, it was a sword. And I'm like, it was a big fish. Like, it took like a full two seconds to get out of the water, like the whole fish. I'm like, you know, this is this is. And it looks so ungainly with that massive bill on it. Oh, it's because yeah, it took like this bills like on this thing was about that big, like it was huge. Uh -huh. Are you serious? Yep. I just saw this one flash. Nice and easy, coach. Nice and easy. This thing can try. I'm just in here. I was not expecting this. Just a bit. You know, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, there's a fish, there's a fish, there's a fish, and everyone going. If it's if it, if it splashed, it might not be one, you know. And I'm like, no, no, it was a fish. There you go, there's a sword jump. Shut up, you little prick. Definitely seen a bill coops. Yep. No way, Nice and easy, little brother. Slow and steady wins the race, yeah? I can't believe that. Coops, you, go. you can lean up against the leaning post there or lock yourself in a corner, one of the two. And you just see this, the, the fish jump straight out of the water. How good do they look when a sword jumps? Because the bill is so big on them compared to oh, it's, It looks ungainly. No, oh, it, it's, you know, it's got the silver streaks on it, with, you know, and it looks awesome. Look at this! No electric reel in this time, eh? Yeah. Well, guess what is significant here, everybody? Coops is 
only 10 years old and I think this fish has only got to be 70 kilos to make a new world record so don't pick it I'm up. pretty sure that it will do that but you got to get it first fingers crossed Coop what do you reckon let's go how's the miller rod going mate look at that they're forgiving these miller rods even little kids can fight them I'm going to get back to that wheel Coops otherwise they're going to get yelled out and then they will really think, oh god! You know, so we're sitting there, and I've, I've had on the wind on for nearly an hour now. Hopefully. So the wind ons we run are a lot longer too. Yeah. So they're not like your normal, like IGFA rated, they're longer because you put your lights further up, so you run a heavy lead. Yeah, it moves. But what about you get it to the boat? Like, we're only 45 minutes into the fight. No, yeah, and we're sitting there, and I'm, you know, and I'm like, buddy, how long have I had this fish? It's kind of like a total war, you know, you wind it on, and then it's taking line, and you wind the wind, then That's you wind the line back, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it takes it back. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, come on, you just want to get up. We went down, got the light off, I'm like, I'm almost there, you know? And we're, so we're winding and we're winding, and I'm sitting like, it's just there. And I'm like, I could, I could tell it was the lines. I'm like, we really feel it. I've got, yeah, I'm like, God, I'm close, you know, I'm winding, I'm winding. Uh, I feel it slip. Oh, no! Pull the hook. Slips and... Can you do that one more time? No! No! You kidding me? What's the feeling? Like you, you oh, can see the footage. You're pretty. pretty oh, you're like I was. Up. I was. Yeah, I was pretty angry. But the worst thing is, I continued to whine to get the line in. About three whines, and that's what comes out of the, of the water. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, and you sit there, and you go, why? Like, that's you know, it's so close, you know. It's. But what does that make you do above all else? Want me to get another one? I can't believe. How did you let that go? Can you tell me? It's a filter system while coming and spread off. How's that though? 